Hello, and welcome to the presentation of our USENIX 2021 paper on the complexities of healing and secure group messaging and why cross-group effects matter. My name is Conrad Kobrock, and this is joint work with Cass Kramers and Britta Hale, from whom you will hear in the second half of this talk. In our work, we analyze two group messaging paradigms. One, where groups are made up of one-to-one -one connections, and the second one, where group states are independent. Here is an example for the first paradigm, where we have individual connections between each of these participants, and we have two groups. The one is in the big circle, and the one is the small circle, just including A and B. And as you can see, the two groups share the use of the one-to-one -one channel between A and B. Where on the other hand, we have the second paradigm, where each of the two groups is independent. So we have one group, including only A and B, and one group, including A, B, C, and D, but they do not share any key material. In our work, we analyze the security of these two group messaging paradigms with regard to post-compromise security. Post-compromise security is the property of a protocol that allows a compromised party to heal. Let's look at an example. Let's say A is compromised in the two examples we had on the previous slide. So we use the red keys to indicate that A is compromised. And now A can send an update to heal a connection. So let's say A sends an update to B. And in both paradigms, this heals the group between A and B. You can see the key on the one-to-one -one channel between A and B has turned green because of the update. And similarly, in the second paradigm, the group key of the group consisting of A and B has also turned green. Now in our work, we look at post-compromise security both in terms of authentication and confidentiality. And in the following example, we are going to look at confidentiality. And after that, Britta is going to talk a bit more about authentication. Now, let's say Alice, the CEO of a company, is returning from a business meeting. And on the airport, on her way back, her phone is compromised and all the data was extracted. Let's look at this from Bob's perspective. We return to the previous example where we have two groups one consisting of A and B, and the other one is the company-wide group consisting of A, B, C, and D. And so while Alice is at the airport, Bob sends her a message, have a good flight. And as you can see from the red skull and crossbones and the red keys, the adversary can actually read and decrypt that message because uh, nothing has happened with the key material and the adversary has the right key material of the group A, B to decrypt that message. And I should note that for the purpose of this example, we assume that with each message comes an update. So upon the next message that Alice sends to everyone, so to the group consisting of A, B, C, and D, she's actually also sending an update to that group. And you can see as a consequence on the left side, as that group uses all the individual channels between A and B, A and D, and A and C, all of the, all of the keys have turned green because of that update. And similarly, on the right side, the key representing the group A, B, C, and D has also turned green. And now let's look at the security of this message and we can see that due to the update, this message is actually secure because Alice has updated her key material and the adversary does not have the right key material to decrypt this message. However, if Bob now sends a message to Alice saying that they have closed some secret deal, there is a difference between the two paradigms. On the left paradigm, using the one-to-one -one connections, the message is secure because with the previous message, Alice has essentially healed all of the subgroups of the A, B, C, and D group, which includes the A and B group. Where on the right side, since the groups are independent, the previous update has done nothing to secure the connection between A and B or the group consisting of A and B. In the paper, we explore more scenarios looking at both paradigms, both authentication and confidentiality, and use those scenarios to uncover weaknesses in both paradigms and explore how the two paradigms differ in their post-compromise security guarantees. And next, it's over to Britta, who will tell you how we explored the design space of group messaging protocols to come up with mitigations for the weaknesses that we found using these scenarios. We will now cover a basic intuition of the design space. More details can be found in the paper. 
Suppose that Alice is in three groups and each group has a separate signature key. Now, if Alice is compromised, all of the keys have been compromised. So the question becomes, how do we heal from this? Well, our first option is to heal the signature key per group. Now, obviously, this means that if Alice heals in group one, then she is still compromised in the other two groups. And that healing mechanism, that even though she thinks she's rotated her signature key, doesn't actually apply to other groups. And she has to track each group to see where the vulnerabilities may be. A second option is that whenever Alice updates any signature key, she then updates all of them. So essentially healing in one group prompts healing in the others. There are two issues with this. First, it leads to information leakage that we now know something about the activity in one group simply based on her actions in the others. Second, and quite importantly, is that this does not heal future groups. So if Alice starts a new group with other participants, she's still going to be compromised in that group. Another update option is periodic updates. And this helps protect against information leakage, but not the future group problem. Essentially, uh, say on a periodic basis of a day or a month, however often she chooses, she rotates all her signature keys. But when new groups come about, uh, according to all our current protocols, she would not be healed in that group. This leads to yet a final option, that we have a global as well as local signature keys. That global authentication secret can then be rotated on a periodic basis or uh, as Alice wishes. And it essentially locks in the possibility of any sort of adversarial forgery on the other per group secrets, which then can also be rotated on say a periodic basis. That global update will then also apply to future groups because it has changed over since the compromise. The design space is further explored in the paper. As you can see on this slide, we also consider confidentiality key updates and the computational costs associated with different types of updates. These results suggest that a global signature key update combined with the symmetric confidentiality key updates on a periodic basis is an excellent combination. This in turn begs the question of how do we update those global signature keys? We take a closer look at the security needs for these types of updating signatures and define post-compromise secure signatures. This is a security experiment. The general idea is that it captures forgeries following a successful key update during a passive adversarial phase. The security experiment details are a little complex for one slide, so we'll give an intuition with a particular construction uh, that comes from our paper. Now, there are many possible constructions that can meet our security definition, so this is just an example. As you can see in this construction, we would have a signature key pair for Alice. If Alice is then compromised, she at some point can update her keys. It is required, as with normal confidentiality PCS, that the adversary is passive for the update phase. So Alice generates a new key pair and signs it with the previous key, along with the label, signifying that this is an update versus other authenticated data. And she then broadcasts a new public key. To meet our security goal following this phase, the adversary should not have any success against forging uh, new keys or new data. Our paper contains many more excellent examples and detail. This includes attack scenarios and more distinctions between the security of pairwise and existing group approaches. We also further explore the design space, including authentication and confidentiality updates relative frequency of each and how they work together.
We also define the PCS SIG security experiment and how it fits with existing messaging protocols. We instantiate and prove our construction under PCS SIG. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact myself or my co-authors. We'd be delighted to answer your questions either pairwise or in a group.